Morning all. Just a quick stroll this morning. Um, just up to a viewpoint that I spotted. Possible viewpoint, I should say. I spotted the other day of Glastonbury Tor. Um, and uh, working not far from it. So uh, it's quite good that I can get here just for work to uh, take a couple of shots, hopefully. Um, and then unfortunately get into work, but uh, needs must and all that. So yeah, so just out this morning, um, I've got the four by five Intrepid and I've got the um, six by 17 roll back this morning. Um, I'm actually giving that a go. And I will show you what film I've got in a bit, but uh, it's not a far walk. Um, it's just up this uh, just up this hill here, and I'm hoping that there might be a good viewpoint on the top of it. Um, but we'll see. So uh, yeah, we'll get up there and we'll uh, see what we got. Hopefully, it's something decent. Well, I've walked up that hill and over the other side. The hill was wet. It was steep. It was slippery. It was muddy. Got to the top of it and a farmer had blocked the public footpath off with an electric fence so I had to make my way around it. Um, I had a lot of footage and a lot of chatting and all the rest of it but when I've reviewed it back it was just all rubbish and boring. So I've cut a lot of that out um, just to get to the actual shooting bit but um, as you can see now this was me making my way back down to the road uh, past some people who are actually living in this wood. Okay so I've sort of found a shot here. I'm not sure if I like it enough. Um, to warrant getting the camera out and actually taking the shot. Um, I like the light on the land at the moment, as you can see, you've got the mid ground there, which is just receiving some light, the background with a tour, which has got no light, and then uh, the dappled light on the uh, uh, sort of foreground area. Um, but there's two trees up on that hill that are just framing the, um, the tour nicely. The only difficulty is, is there is a few um, telegraph poles and a pylon in the background which uh, isn't really sort of something I'm liking. So I think I'm going to carry on and just see if there's anything else really. So um, I'm nearly back at the road now. So um, yeah, we'll carry on. There might be something from the road, you never know. I might have wasted my time walking over that hill, but uh, if I have done the walk, I would have never have known. So anyway, right, I shall carry on and um, we'll see what we can get. Okay, so hopefully it's not too windy. There's a little bit of wind on the mic. Hopefully this hill might hold a good view of the tour. It's certainly my last go for this morning. Hopefully, hopefully there's a nice view up here. God, yeah, so I'm fit, it's no good. Okay, so I just thought I'd uh, show you this quickly as it's uh, happened in the field. Um, I carry one of these with me, which is the like the tensioner. Uh, this is from E-Tone, and it's a tensioner just to um, stop this from moving around. As you can see here, this has got loose. Um, now I can tighten, tighten it up, but what happens with these lenses is basically, without you scratching that, these unscrew. Got to be careful of that so i've cut myself on this more times than i can remember always happens when i'm in a bit of a hurry but basically the end screw like that uh, so the back comes away and the front goes away as well now what i do with my lenses is i'll just put that in there i um line once the when the aperture blades are open i line this up with what is the intrepid symbol on the top of this but it would be whatever but it's the up position um, and essentially these have got like different sizes and then on the back, there is this uh, screw which sort of tightens it all in place. So all you do is you find the right one, which is not that one, it's that one, which is shutter number one. And there's these little lugs, and all you do 
as you just tighten it like that to tighten again and then we'll put that back in there without shredding my hands because like I say it is uh, pretty lethal and then this just screws back on the back he says there we go and that's it not moving anymore so uh, I can now put this back on the camera so I just thought I'd show you that um, while it had happened so yeah I'll say you were uh, tighten tighten this uh, this up to that I suppose so yeah anyway I'll get on and set this up okay so I just uh, the rain reason for coming out today was uh, for a walk of course um, to try and get a shot of this although like I say the conditions aren't ideal uh, but I am shooting black and white today and I have got a new film that I wanted to try out. Um, it's relatively cheap, it's about £5 um, and it is a retro classic film. Uh, it's panchromatic and it's 100 speed and it is this Froma classic film. Uh, it's 100 speed, it's made by, um, um, I think it's Fo Fomo Brahima, they're a Czech based company. Uh, founded about 1921. So this is a retro style box, limited edition, because um, it's to celebrate their 100 year anniversary. So that is the, uh, that's the film we're gonna be shooting today. Like I say, it's 100 speed. It should be sharp, it should be fine grain. Um, I might shoot it at 200 speed today, um, just because there's a bit of wind about today. It's not massively windy, but it is a bit windy. And I'm just a bit worried that any wind, uh, when you're trying to shoot a four by five camera, catches the bellow especially when you've got something like a 250mm lens on which is what I've got I've got the Fuji 250 on obviously the bellows are quite um, quite extended and so that means that you're going to get a bit of movement um, when you're uh, obviously trying to take a shot so I'm going to try and shield it as much as possible by standing the other side of it um, I've actually all set up now I've um, uh, made sure that everything's sharp in there and it's all uh, it's all composed properly. So yeah, we're going to um, we're going to take this shot. As you can see, there's a bit of dappled light on the landscape, which is quite nice. I'm going to wait to some light to get onto the um, uh, onto the tour itself. But yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to test this new film out, and we'll see what it's like. And obviously, I'm going to put the uh, put the pictures I, I get up um, I get from this. I'll put them up, good, bad, and the ugly, and I'll I'll talk through it. Um, a bit later on, obviously, after I've developed them and, and that. So, yeah, so we've got four shots with this and uh, we'll see what we can get. Yeah, let's get on and get shooting. OK, so I just want to mention this quickly. Um, this is my new Pentax uh, spot meter. It's the Mark V. Um, it's not the digital one, it's the analog one. Um, I think that they both do uh, the same thing. So. This is the first time out in with this. I have practiced at home and got some good results on it. So I'm fairly confident with what I'm doing with this, but I am still getting used to using this instead of my phone, which I'm filming on now. So um, yeah, we're gonna use this in the field for the first time today. Once I've used it a lot more um, and I'm fully up to speed of it, I will do a bit of a review, uh, although it is an old bit of kit. And I will also do a full sort of how to use uh, for those of you who are looking to get a spot meter. Um, this was about a hundred and I think it's about 150 pounds in the UK this uh, got it from Japan. Um, it was a, uh, a, a mint condition one according to them. So uh, yeah so that's what I've gone with so we're gonna we're gonna give this a go. Now um, there's the uh, you know, I could use the Ansel Adams approach to, um, to meter him, which is very good. Um, but I'm going to go with uh, what Nick Carver teaches, which is the precision method, um, where basically I am using a scale um, and I'm choosing where I want the uh, certain light to um, end up on that scale. Um, so I'm going to use this and we'll see what results I get from it. Uh, but I'm hoping that um, this will improve my exposures um, on any film that I'm using. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get on and I'm gonna um, use this. So yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Okay, so like I say, I'm using the uh, Nick Carver method, uh, or the one he teaches, which is the precision method to manual metering. Um, and basically, um, I would recommend going and checking out his YouTube channel. 
and he does do online courses as well, which um, I have done a couple of, which are very, very good, very detailed, very thorough. And I definitely recommend doing them if you're looking to get into large format photography or want to learn about um, uh, manual metering. And he does do some other courses as well, so well worth going and checking out. But anyway, this is the, the scale that he uses. And basically what you're doing is you're choosing um, a brightness uh, out here and you're choosing where you want it to go on, on this scale. So you've got textureless white, which is just completely white, down to uh, completely black. He does two scales, uh, which is a plus four exposure and a minus four exposure. Or if you're using a um, something like a, a Velvia 50 or something like that, which is... Um, um, uh, not a negative film basically uh, he, he does the scale and you only get three three stops either way so six stops in total so yeah i'm going to use this and uh, we'll see how we get on Okay, so I've just taken a meter reading uh, through the um, uh, through the filter itself. Uh, like I said, I'm using a red filter. Um, I'm going to go with S22 and a third, which will give me about four for a second. So it's going to be quite a slow shutter speed to get this. Like I say, there is a bit of wind about, so I'm just going to move that there change that round to fourth let's do a bit of a test shot it's all working fine shutter's closed ready to go like i said i'm just a bit annoyed about this wind it seems to be picking up a bit um, i'm gonna have to try and shield it as well as then shielding the the lens from uh flare so it's gonna be a bit of stuff going on here but uh yeah let's try and get this shot so i'm just gonna put this away and then try and get this shot with this wind like it is it's, i think it's actually picked up a bit annoyingly enough cut the shutter Just try and shield that. Thankfully, it's a long lens, so uh, I shouldn't get my uh, this in the shot. That's it done. I think there is a bit of camera shake there, so it might not be the sharpest shot in the world, but it's going to give me a good idea to what this uh, film um, is like. And I'm hoping the audio is okay because uh, the wind is coming up my back, so I'm, I'm shielding the mic. Um, I've actually lost the dead cat for it, so uh, it's a bit annoying. Last shot then, so I'm looking for frame seven, should be there. Right, let's get in and take this shot. Oh, it's picked up a bit. I might just uh, hold off a second. You might be able to hear it on the mic, possibly. It's the only problem with large format photography is uh, these bellows act like a wind sail. So trying to keep the uh, the camera steady can be quite difficult. Um, so when you're up hiking in mountains and stuff like that, uh, sometimes it can be frustrating trying to keep the, uh, the camera shielded from the wind. Right, that's that. Last shot then. Sit down. Put dark slide back in. Roll this on. And that's it for the outdoor part of this uh, lovely adventure this morning. Um, I'm going to get back home a bit later and I will um, get these developed, get them scanned, uh, get them on the computer and then we can have a look at the images and uh, talk through them and hopefully they've come out okay. So um, yeah, back to, uh, back to the studio. Well I hope you enjoyed that um, 
short sort of film uh, for want of a better description. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the film itself. Now I've had a chance to um, develop it and scan it and uh, and then obviously um, put the images up that you've, you've just seen. So my initial impressions of it is that, um, you know, the throwing of pan itself is, uh, you know, it's a nice film. It's The negative is uh, is quite thin, I would say, and a bit prone to scratching and things like that. But it is an affordable film, which I really like, especially this day and age, because it's, you know, everything is so expensive at the moment. And, you know, with Kodak releasing that they're going to, you know, raise the price of their film and everything. It's just, you know, everything just seems to be going up in the film world, unfortunately. So it's nice to see that there's, a, you know, still some sort of affordable um, films out there. Like I say, that, that role there is uh, is about £5.50 in the UK, something like that. Um, I mean, essentially what this is, is this is just throwing a pound 100 in a nice fancy box. Um, you know, just to, like I said before, celebrate their 100 years of uh, being in business. So, um, you know, fair play to them for um, you know, still making decent, affordable film. So there is a few things that I don't like about it, um, or I would say there's one main thing that I don't like about it, um, <clears throat> and that is that when you scan um, or when you develop the film and you've hung it up to dry, and I developed this because um, I use um, Ilford's DDX developer and there wasn't any time... Uh, developer time for this so I used the developer time for the uh, Delta 100 uh, that seemed to do a nice job to be fair and they've been hung side by side um, and you know both done exactly the same way and what you get on the Fromo pan is that it curls up massively so if you're trying to scan at home on a flatbed scanner so like I said before I use the an Epson um, 750 V scanner. Um, I use their trays. I also use better scanning um, trays also. And what you find is if you're trying to just do a quick and dirty scan and, and uh, get, get this film into your film holder, you find it curling up and you're trying to, and you're fighting with it to get it in the film holder. It's a right pain in the ass. And then you never know really whether how flat the actual film is when it comes to scanning. So of course, when you scan the film, if your film isn't flat, then essentially you can then put your um, you can put your image out of focus because the the, uh, the the scanner has a fixed focus on it. So you can end up putting the scanner uh, your um, negative out of focus. So it's hugely frustrating uh, if you're trying to do it with a um, just with a tray and do a quick scan, uh, which is generally what what I like to do anyway. So that is a frustrating thing. Um, I haven't tried fluid mounting the, the scan and I'm sure if I send it off to be professionally done, they can make a million times better job than, than uh, you know, when you're trying to do a scan at home. So, but it's just a frustration because like I say, when I, I, I actually developed my Delta 100 and my and the frame pad at the same time, the Delta 100, as you'll see from the, the clip that I just put up, is pretty much completely flat. And all of the Ilford films are pretty much completely flat. You know, port, including uh, Kodak's film like Portra and, uh, you know, any of their films, again, are completely flat when you scan. But it seems to be Fromapan and also Lomography's um, films as well. They just curl up and uh, I can't ever seem to get rid of that curl and it is hugely frustrating. But anyway, that aside, you know, the film is quite fine grain and I found it very, very sharp. So it was once I'd wrestled it into the, the, the scanning trays, actually the scanning process and, you know, minor adjustments you could do to the, uh, to the film were very, very good as hopefully you've just seen. And yeah, so would I buy it again? Yeah, of course I'd buy it again. It's, it's uh, you know, it's an affordable film and uh, I think it's available in, um, like I say, it is a Fromapan 100 um, really. So it's available in, in 35 and also, um, 120 and you can get it in sheet film as well now what i would say about the sheet film is you obviously you don't get that issue with the curling on on the, on the sheet film so i would definitely recommend uh you know getting getting this film it's good it's, it's affordable 
and um, you know, affordable is good at the end of the day. So I just wanted to mention a few other things for those of you who are, you know, shooting something like the day I back um, for your large format or you're using any back really, any roll back um, for your large format or your, you know, whatever really. But so this is just the back off of, you know, the, the actual film holder. And the reason why I'm just showing this is because I'm gonna show the back in strip paper for the film just so you can see what you're looking for um, if you do shoot this through one of these backs where you're looking through one of these holes. So I don't know how well you can see that, but you can see there you've got three different options. So you can set this day I back up in three different um, setups. So you've got, I think I've, I've mentioned this before in another video, we've got six by 17, six by 12 and six by 14. And basically when you're advancing the, the film, you're looking for the numbers and it gives you on the back the numbers you're looking for. So I, I only really shoot six by 17 and you're looking for frame number one, three, five and seven. So you get four shots out of it. So of course, where you're looking for them is on the backing paper of the film. So when you're advancing, you'll see the backing paper roll by and you're looking out for the number that corresponds to the, the frame you're shooting. So just wanted to show that before I showed this. So this here, is the backing strip for the Froma pan. And what you've got is you've got your usual um, marker. So on many, many cameras, you'll see two red dots and you're advancing the uh, this on your reel uh, or into the uh, camera until this lines up with the two red dots. On the iDay back, there isn't that. So what I do is I advance this until I see this arrow and it's probably gone about half an inch past the um the spool and then i will close it back up to make sure that it is light tight so so that's that bit and then as you move along the first thing you'll see is these arrows and then as you advance further you're looking for these uh circles and they start large there's three of them and they go to small and then once you've gone past your three the next thing you're going to see is a number and that number is your uh, frame. So like I said before, on the six by 17, you're looking for frames one, uh, three, five, and seven. So you would just go along until you see that, you'd take your shot, you'd then advance it further, you'd go past number two, because you don't need frame two. Then you'd look for your next set of three dots, and then uh, the number three to appear. So that's what you're looking for. And then if you're shooting in different you know, frames, so this would be the six by 12, uh, you've actually got four, four dots there, and then your frame, four dots there, and then your frame, four dots there, and then your frame. And then when you come down to six by 14, what you're gonna see is um, actually five dots, and then your frame, five dots, your frame, five dots, your frame, et cetera, et cetera until you've run out of frames. So that is what the backing paper from the Froma pan looks like. Um, like I say, it is different on uh, on different films. So Ilford's, I think, is like a circle, but it's like a dotted circle and they get they start big and get smaller and then you get your frame. But that's just how uh, Froma pan do there. So I thought that was interesting just to have a look at that. But like I say, <coughs> would I shoot it again? Yes, I would. Um, I enjoyed shooting it. And that's it really. Recommend the film. It's good. Go out and get it. Give it a go yourself. I will just mention that I haven't been given that film. I actually went out and bought it with my own money uh, from Bristol Cameras. And um, yeah, that's it really. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and leave a like on the video. And any comments, always read them and announce the comments. And I always like chatting to you guys about uh, about um, different things. So yeah, um, hope you enjoyed the video and I shall see you in the next one.